Fasana Moyo, one of the 23 presidential candidates in the race for the top job. He's a former cabinet minister during the Mugabe administration, and I understand he left office uh, in 2001. Dr. Moyo, thank you very much indeed for making the time to talk to us on the agenda. I guess the big question is, can Zimbabwe hold free, fair and credible elections? Well, at the moment, the, the president is showing commitment to doing that in spite of the events of Blawayo a couple of days ago. He's gone out and said he's not deterred from that path of uh, creating an environment where Zimbabweans can express themselves openly and freely. And I must say that in our experience, as we've been campaigning, that has by and large been upheld. I've not had any problems wherever I've gone into, in the yeah. country. We've seen the visuals of uh, that explosion in Bulawayo. Uh, shocking, I guess, the whole world, isn't it? A very close call for President uh, Emerson Monangagwa. Um, how big of a threat is violence ahead of this election? Well, I think we have to understand that in the past 38 years, we have, and I say we as a society, I think have condoned behavior which results in things like what happened two days ago. It's been a violent society, in fact, instigated in many respects by the behavior of government itself. So I think we ne just need to accept that it will take time for us to literally re-socialize our people outside of that kind of behavior where we can change to being able to debate issues and disagree without resorting to killing people. Well, the perpetrators of violence, are they being, is there a concerted effort to identify them and arrest them? Well, I'm hoping so. Mm. Uh, let's wait for the evidence. I, I, I don't think we should prejudge it. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, the president would be interested to know who did it. Mm. Let's wait mm. and see. Well, on that note, it's been reported that uh, the president said that he suspects a group linked to former uh, First Lady Grace Mugabe that uh, was behind uh, his attempt, uh, uh, the attempt on his life. What do you make of that? Well, when it's expressed like that, it sounds like it's an internal issue within ZANU as a party. Personally, I don't have the tools and I don't want to speculate about mm. where this might be coming from. So I would rather wait for the people who've got the technical ability to do the investigations and act or react on the basis of the facts that come out. Let's talk about you, Dr. Moyo. You left office in 2001. Why? Because I disagreed with uh, what was being done at the moment. So let's, in fact, let's take, let's remind ourselves what happened. Mm. 2000, and 2000 1999 onwards, the land issues got to a very high tension. And what I objected to at the time was that we had a policy to redistribute land, which I think was a correct policy. In fact, I think the farmers, the World Bank, the British even uh, had agreed to put money behind that. But the methods which were then used appeared to me like state-sponsored violence on the farmers, and I thought that was wrong. And at the time, I remember telling people, that after the land issue had been dealt with, there would be a country to run whose moral fiber would have been destroyed if we were not careful. And I think, again, I just say, look at what has happened mm. in this. I've been proven right. You have to be very careful about the tools you use to resolve issues because those tools tend to stay with you. Mm. You resort to violence and encourage violence. It stays with you. The society looks at that as the norm, and that's not the way to go. So yeah. I objected to that. And I'm hoping that our society now is working up to the fact that there, is, there are other ways of dealing with our disagreements and make, uh, moving forward and resolving Well, them. land is very much topical here in South Africa. Currently, we have uh, Parliament soliciting views from uh, South Africans with regards to the land issue. What can South Africa learn from, from Zimbabwe? Firstly, I, I think that the land issue cannot be avoided. You have to resolve it. That's point number one. That South Africans, those with land which is disproportionate or, in fact, which arose out of a dispossession of other people, you have to accept that that issue has to be resolved. That's point number one. Point number two, though, I think you have to be very careful about the methods you use. Instead of literally almost like recreating a cycle of violence or unrest which can arise out of the methodology, you need to just be much more deliberate about constitutionalism and following law and order properly to resolve that issue. But as a community, if you're going to get stability, you cannot, you cannot avoid dealing with it. Mm. You have to deal with it.
On the elections, it's a pivotal point in your country, isn't it? It's the first time since liberation that Robert Mugabe won't be on the ballot paper. How has his absence changed the political landscape of Zimbabwe? For me, as an opposition candidate, you'd have to understand that the change that happened in November had nothing to do with the Zimbabweans. It had everything to do with ZANU. It was an internal issue within ZANU. And in fact, if the president says what happened in Blawayo was an issue or a case of Grace Mugabe's people, it continues, in fact, to reinforce the issue that there are unresolved issues within ZANU as a party. So whether Mugabe as an individual is there or not actually does not change it. ZANU is still the government of the day. And that's what we should not miss. If Zimbabwe is going to move forward, we need to see beyond ZANU. And we clearly, unsurprisingly, believe that the country will never be able to move forward if ZANU continues to be the governing party. Why? We just don't think they've got the tools to deal with the phase of growing the economy. They just don't have the tools. So why are you the right man for the job? Because I understand how the economy works. Precisely, ZANU gave us liberation and we value that. But we also need to value that we are not at war. We shouldn't be at war. We now need to move into a different phase of developing our country. We, we got independence. Now let's build an economy. And in building an economy, let's go and get the people who've got the skills to build an economy. We are not at all a war anymore. I, I often use a very simplistic example. In this, a building like this. He's got systems like a, 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 an electrical system. And also you've got um, plumbing in this place. If something goes wrong with your plumbing, you don't go and get an electrical engineer to fix it and vice versa. So you get the appropriate skills for the phase you're going through. Pl a plumber for plumbing and an electrician for electrical problems. Zimbabwe needs to learn the same. On that note, thank you very much indeed for your time. That was uh, Dr. Nkosana Moyo, one of the 23 presidential candidates uh, for the Zimbabwe's top job. Well, let's look.